Well, a beautiful day here at the ballpark. A little bit cold. Had freezing weather in the area last night and expected to be cold again tonight. Will Marcy, the junior center fielder, batting 324 this season. And swings and misses. And the thing about Lofton, Charlie, if he's got that changeup working, he can be really good against right-handed hitters. It is an elite pitch. Marcy with one home run, four doubles. So 18 of his 23 hits this year have been singles. Tiger leadoff man for Matt Reiser. Swing and a miss and a strikeout for Lofton to get it all started. Now Lofton has been throwing strikes this year. He struck out eight before that one, so nine strikeouts on the season. Not a walk allowed for Lofton. And so Seth Cox will come to the plate. Memphis only has one left-handed hitter in the order today against the lefty Bradley Lofton. And that's Jacob Compton down in the sixth spot, the first baseman. Cox with four home runs. And Charlie, you look back at this past weekend, State able to win two out of three. And they got admirable starting pitching on Friday and then again on Sunday. More on Sunday than anything. Got good relief pitching on Friday from Nolan Stevens, the freshman. Then on Saturday, found themselves down early 9-1 to one in the third inning against LSU. Battled back and lost at 9-8. to eight, And then one in eight innings on Sunday in a 10-run rule, 15-5 to five over LSU. The 0-2. Well, sawed him off and out to the shortstop, David Mershon. And so Mershon started in the Saturday game and then the Sunday game out of shortstop. Dylan Cup was hit in the head with a fastball on Friday night. It also came up a little bit lame, and slid in hard down at second base. And so Cup was not in the lineup on Saturday or Sunday and stayed playing with the same infield they used the last two days of that series against LSU. Here's Austin Baskin batting 311 on the season, three home runs and 17 RBIs. And dropped it on in there, and the count's 0 2. So Lofton has been very solid so far with the secondary pitches. And now a chance for a quick first. And the 0-2, and strike three called on the inside corner at the knees. Matthew Wilbanks, Bryce Chance, the DH. Joe Powell doing the catching today for State. And here's Amani Larry. And the 91 at fastball is in there for a strike. Amani batting 316 on the season. A couple of home runs. He's got seven doubles on the year. State had three doubles in the first inning against LSU on Sunday, and there's a fly ball hit into left field. And ranging back is Davis out there in left field to haul it in. Riley Davis makes the catch, and it's out number one. Well, Amani hit it pretty well, but Davis able to get back and make the catch. That'll get David Mershon to the plate. And as we saw all weekend long, when Mershon comes to the plate, the third baseman's going to come into the edge of the grass. That's what Baskin's going to do here. Rashawn, a threat to bunt. Now, the one thing that you do, though, when you come in, and we saw Rashawn do this this weekend, it just increases the chances for him to slap one past you. And a changeup, it catches the knees on the outside corner. And 2 Chopped it. Whoa, knocked down, and that'll be an infield single. 
Uh, Kay Davis reached around and almost came up with it clean. That would have been a highlight type play. And State has its first hit of the day. It's an infield single by David Mershon, and here's Dakota Jordan. A big swing. Dakota, 10 home runs on the season now. Last week, he was the SEC Player of the Week. 17 of his 31 hits have been extra base hits. Seven doubles, 10 home runs. 408 batting average for Dakota Jordan. When you look at the on base percentage now up to 550, that's because he's drawn 23 walks. Many of those as of late intentional. And try to start him off the plate, didn't offer. And you look at one of the reasons the Bulldogs were better offensively this weekend, it's the fact that the guys stacked up behind Jordan really elevated their play at the plate. State's a team now batting at 305. We've got four players And as the everyday starters batting over 300, you throw downs in there, he's now batting 412 of 30. After getting more action this past weekend, and you have some guys in the lineup who are hitting it well right now. And file back in the count two and two. And Charlie, you have to say, that's the thing about State so far this year. The pitching has been much better. An ERA right now at 3.85. The walks are way down. The defense has been better. The hitting has not been as efficient as the Bulldogs would have liked, especially in some non-conference games. But really hit it well this past weekend. Had 41 combined hits against LSU pitching. Well, and the hope is that that's not an aberration, but a, a start to an offense that's heating up. One out, one on the pitch. And lifted into right center field. Ranging in the gap, back to the wall. And that ball carries out of the ballpark for the 11th home run of the season for Dakota Jordan. And State has a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first. Well, just judging by watching Marcy out in center field, he thought he'd have a play on it, but that ball was hit well. It just carried and carried, and it goes 391 feet. Not a foot to spare. One hundred off the bat. Wasn't a bad pitch at all. Fastball up and away. He just went and got it. That ball was three inches off the strike zone. The guy's going up to take a seat and looked around. He's like, oh, man, this got taken out. Here's Hunter Hines. Homered in the game on Sunday. It shows you how strong Dakota Jordan is, a pitch off the plate like that. And quickly 0-2. Try to check the swing. An infield single by David Mershon. And hey, Mershon's ability to get on base in front of Dakota Jordan. It's changed the offense. Has really changed the offense. And affects the way you have to pitch to it. The 0-2. Ripped into right field, and that's a base hit for Hunter Hines. Well, a good piece of hitting. Got the fastball inside from Cade Davis and pulls it into right field. Had the quick hands, and the Bulldogs have their third hit. Yeah, this ball inside, but Hunter having to protect the plate puts it in play into right field, and now Isaac will hit. 2 nothing lead on a two-run home run by Dakota Jordan.
Connor Hyzak. Batting 358 now. And fouled it off. Nice job by Hyzak that time to lay off the pitch off the plate. That one. Up and way in. Yeah. Clean out the sinuses. And now down and away. Isaac had six hits and 12 at bats on the weekend against LSU. And lifts that one into shallow center field. And ranging in to make the play is the center fielder, Marcy, and that's out number two. It can be a tough time of the day out in center field, but Marcy had a beat on that one all the way. So Aaron Downs will get a chance to swing the bat with a man on it, two down here. In the home half of the first inning, Bulldogs lead it two to nothing. It was the Dakota Jordan home run. A ball part, I don't think he really just squared up either. It just shows you how strong he is. Well, Aaron Downs, Pella, Iowa native. Four for five in a game on Sunday. He went seven for 14 on the weekend against LSU. Two for five in a game Friday. There were several plays, too, where Downs had to get down the line well, beat out a throw, avoid a double play, earn an infield hit that kept innings going. Popped him up. And the catcher calling for it and making the catch in foul territory is the catcher, DeBose. Brennan DeBose puts a – and Bradley Lofton. Go back to work. He struck out a pair in the top of the first inning and got a pop-up. Dante Stewart will lead off. A little soft line drive in the left field, and that's a base hit. First hit of the day for the Memphis Tigers. And the leadoff man aboard here in the top of the second. So ball not hit terribly hard, but hit in the right spot. Just over the head of Mershon gets into left field for a base hit. Now he gets Seals to the plate. Pierre Seals batting 350. Team's leading hitter. Sophomore from Memphis, of course, Lofton. The Soto Central guy in the Memphis area on the mound. Talked about Memphis coming in at 11 and 11. They lost two out of three in their season opening series at Jacksonville State. Split their first two midweek games. They lost against Little Rock on a Tuesday and then beat Central Arkansas on a Wednesday. And then they won two out of three at home against Bowling Green. Won two out of three at home against Wright State. They lost at Ole Miss a couple of weeks ago on a Tuesday night. Five to three. 
This past weekend, they went on the road to New Orleans, a team that State played this past Wednesday down at Biloxi. Big swing and a count one and two. And Memphis was able to take two out of three from the privateers. Of course, State walked it off and won it in 13 on Wednesday night down in Biloxi against New Orleans. Here's a one, two. Almost not a New Orleans game without Ron Polk getting thrown out. <laughs> I should have like a ceremonial tossing of Ron Polk. Boy, back early 80s, Ron Polk in New Orleans, somebody was getting run. Was that 83, 84? 84 was the year that we died hit the home run here. Coach Polk got tossed out down at New Orleans when they brought a fan out of the stands to be the second base umpire. Second base umpire. <laughs> <laughs> Who, by all accounts, had may have partaken. Been, well, he steered headfirst into his fanhood. Yeah. In the first few innings. May have partaken. May have partaken in some beverages that were not of the. He needed Coke a card for. <laughs> yeah, two and two the count. Lead off man aboard here in the second inning. Dante Stewart with a single to lead it off. Swing and a miss, and that's the third strikeout for Bradley Lofton in the first out of the second. And now Jacob Compton will bat. The only left-handed hitter in the order. Chases up and in, strike one. Compton, the senior from Olive Branch. Batting 282 on the season, eight home runs. Runner going, got a great jump. Yes, he did. No way you throw out Stewart there, but that's his third stolen base of the season. Three for three now, stolen bases. And take a look. By the time that Powell got the ball, you got no shot. Pitch was a ball. The count one and one. And you see that pitch there on the one one. Lofton has a lot of confidence in that changeup. He'll throw it to righties and lefties. Ripped into right field, and that ball is in the corner. Karam's off the wall, and that will be a ground rule double for Memphis, and it's a 2-1 game as coming around to score is Stewart. And that ball hit hard. It popped up off that brick wall, and Karam out of the stadium. You see that curved wall. That yeah, ball hit 108 down in the right field corner. I don't think I've ever seen a ball do that. I haven't either. So Compton doubles and Curtis, the senior, bat with one out. Yeah, going back to your point, Charlie, that's the first time I've seen that happen, too, where it hits off that curved area on an upward tra trajectory after it short hops a wall and then skips over the wall to its left. One and two the count, runner at second. A run home here in the top of the second inning. Right there on the Ackerson name and climbed over that 330 sign. One, two. And there's strike three called. And so the strikeout for Bradley Lofton, and that's his fourth of the day. Good. 
missed down and in. Man, you're going back and just thinking about, I know you mentioned New Orleans and playing privateers in New Orleans and how big of those series were, how good the privateers were back in the early 1980s playing here, regionals. New Orleans went to the College World Series in 84. At Kyle Weedai, a grand slam off of Jeff Brantley. Sent New Orleans to the College World Series here in 84. The 1-1. One, one. And what was so interesting about that whole situation is Kyle Weedai was the son of Wayne Weedai. He was a graduate of state and one of the biggest state guys there was. Now, you're thinking of Stuart Weedai. Yes. Who had the Grand Slam. Stuart Weedai had the Grand Slam. Who did I say? You said Kyle. Weedai. Kyle's his brother. Kyle's the younger brother. Oh, who shout was a, out to Kyle. Shout out to Kyle, who was a manager on the basketball team here for the longest time under Rick Stansbury. I think Kyle's up in D.C. now. Three and two the count, runner at second. And that's ball four. Try to get the chase. And now first and second with two outs. And Riley Davis, the nine-hole hitter, will come to the plate. Compton with a double driving in the run, and then Curtis with a strikeout. DeVos draws the walk. And the Bulldog catcher Joe Powell goes out to have a word with Bradley Lofton. <laughs> Riley Davis, the batter, tying run in scoring position. You look at this Memphis program, last went to a regional in 2007. That was in the third year of Darren Schoenrock's time in Memphis. Prior to that, it had been since 1994. 94 team, really good, 52 and 11, 22 and one in league play. The breaking ball drops in there for a strike. I think Rock was the coach that night that the squirrel got in the transformer and burnt out the lights. Here's a one two. To the third baseman and pass Kohler and into left field. And that will tie the game. Ball gets away from downs. Runner going to take third and that'll be an error on the Bulldog left fielder, runner going to try to score now and will, and that's going to be multiple errors. Well, it's a 3-2 Memphis lead as the Bulldogs have the tough time fielding the hot shot on the left side. You really can't fault Kohler on that, the Memphis transfer. And then they got away from downs in left field. Runner going to take third, and then the throwaway allowed another run to score. You got to charge two errors, don't you, Charlie? Yeah, I think you do. And, you know, the ball, that ball was hit hard. and It's a play, though, that Kohler will tell you he ought to make. And that's one thing the Bulldogs, we didn't see this weekend, but the defensive laps kind of reemerged right there. Out to the shortstop, Mercer. Here's Logan Kohler, who started his career at Memphis. Actually, he did not. He started his career at Oklahoma in his freshman season, played sophomore and junior seasons at Memphis, and then coming to start well this year, the 
native of Little Elm, Texas. Has been really good at third so far this year for the dogs. There you go back. Only scored one error there. They score that as a single to left. And then a throwing error. I was going to give two errors on downs. One, not fielding it cleanly because the guy stopped at second. Then he was going to get to third. And the throw away at third allowed him to get home. I'm going to have to go to the replay. Out to the shortstop behind the second base bag. Throw it across and tie the out. That's a nice play out there by Curtis, the shortstop. Jake Curtis moving to his left. Kohler retired. Well, situation two where Curtis understanding the the situation. But let's take a look back. So a hard hit ball. Kohler will tell you he should have made the play, though. And there's a little bobble picking it up and then the throw. Yeah, Downs would feel a little uh, a little harshly treated to give him two errors there. Oh, that ball's that ball needs to be covered up right there. Out to the shortstop again. And then toss it across and time the out. Jake Curtis making the play. A couple of ground ball outs to start the second base. Uh, to, start to start the second inning. And Joe Powell will bat. So are you saying, Charlie, that I would be a strict official score? Too strict? I'm saying that you would not last long in that position <laughs> by virtue of player vote. <laughs> And Bradley Lofton going back to work. Seth Cox, the two-hole hitter, will lead off. Cox popped out to the shortstop his first time up. And the 2-0. That one drops in there for a strike. Here's the thing you want to see for Bradley Lofton right here is handling the adversity. Bouncing back and putting up a good inning here in the top of the third. And swing and a miss and the count evens. Only two of the runs were earned back in that top of the second inning. And off the end of the bat, we'll do it again. Well, hit it on the handle out into left field, and Mershon got a good jump on it to get back there to make the catch for out number one. Well, this is a great play by Mershon getting back and taking charge here. Downs loses his footing a little bit, doesn't get a good jump on the ball, but Mershon saw it the whole way and gets back and makes the play. You see Downs lost his footing. I'm not sure he would have gotten there. Might have held up long enough, but Mershon won't make us find out. And now Austin Baskin will bat. He struck out looking his first time up. Kohler backs up on it. Play that one nicely and tosses across in time the out. He's been really good for state at third base this year. And two quick outs in the top of the third. Hard hit ball and Kohler able to back on it, set his feet, and make a good throw across. And now Dante Stewart will bat. He single to left field his first time up. Both teams have three hits. State took a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning on a two-run home run by Dakota Jordan. And then Memphis answers with three of their own in the top of the second, 1-1. 
And Lofton has been successful with off-speed pitches. Seems to have a real feel for it here today. And a one-two. And able to check the swing, says the first base umpire, Kevin Sweeney. That'll be the top of the order due up in the bottom part of the inning. Bulldogs would like to have a quick top half, get the hitters back to the plate. Yeah, the 3-2. Line to the left field. Downs makes the diving catch to end the end. Davis gave up two runs on three hits in the first inning. A home run to Dakota Jordan, a two-run shot. Amani Larry hit a ball hard his first time up, sent the left fielder Davis back to make the catch just shy of the warning track. Try to slip the fastball by. Now the count one and two. All right, so you see one upstairs there. Try to raise the eye level, maybe come back with a breaking pitch. Nope, try to hit the outside part of the plate. Left it way off the plate, and count goes full. K. Davis retired the side in order in the second. Three ground balls out to the shortstop. Here's a 3 2. That ball lifted into left field. Should be an easy play. And ranging over to make the catch is Riley Davis, the left fielder, for out number one. And David Mershon will bat. The six in a row retired down by Kay Davis. That ball hit well in the right field. Back to the track, and Mershon goes yard. David Mershon with his first home run. And we're tied at three. Well, Mershon's been giving the Bulldogs a spark all season long, but he's done it by putting balls in play. That one, he just puts out of the yard. Got the pitch up. And pulls it out, and that is his first Bulldog home run. And now Jordan down the right field line, that ball slicing and out of play. Mershon played in 30 games last year, had 23 hits in his freshman year. 21 of 23 hits were singles. And his first Bulldog home run coming from the left side as he yanks one out to right. And strike three is called for out number two. So Dakota Jordan goes down looking. And that's the first strike out of the day for Kay Davis. And here's Hunter Hines. Hines single to right field his first time up. On the pitch, it was just about right there. Got it high and tight, and he pulled it in the right field. 
Chopped off the glove. Shortstop makes the play, throws it over, and that's in time for the out. Appeared in 21 games as a freshman, made two starts. And he will face Pierre Seals to lead off here in the fourth. He struck out 35 in 36 and two-thirds work his freshman year. And a hard hit ball through the left side, and that's a base hit. Pierre Seals, team's leading hitter for Memphis, as we talked about, in his first at bat. Well, Pico that time had a couple of balls just off the plate, had to come on the 2-0 count, had to get something more across the middle, and Seals hits it hard in the left field. And here's Jacob Compton. Had an RBI double his first time up. Pulled a ball to the wall in right field. Popped up, foul territory left side, and that should get out of play and will. And it's one and two. Pitch is high and tight and off of Powell and over by the Memphis dugout. And now the count two and two. Runner was going on the pitch. Seals gets credit with a stolen base. Loses another one arm side and up. And to the right side, Amani Larry. And out number one of the top of the four. The Seals gets the single steal second now reaches third on the ground out to the right side and now Memphis has the go ahead run 90 feet away here in the top of the fourth inning as Compton does what you want to do if you can't get a hit you'd love something on the ground to the right side hit behind the runner and moving to third with less than two outs here's Jake Curtis struck out looking his first time up So Bradley Lofton goes three innings today, gives up three runs, just two earned on three hits. He strikes out four, he walks one. So Pico out last year with an arm injury. A low, long road back. State had a similar situation with Stone Simmons. They were hoping to get him back a couple weeks ago, but Chris Lamonas talked about it Sunday. Stone Simmons lost for the season. Ground ball left side. That'll get the run home. Nice pick by Kohler. Toss across in time for the out. That was big time. Yes, it was. Run comes in to score to give Memphis a 4-3 lead, but Kohler able to... Pick it over there working to his left. Take a look at this. Yeah, this ball has him moving to his left. No chance to right himself and make a play at the plate. They will deliver a good throw over to first. Now two down. And Brennan DeBose will come to the plate. He walked his first time up.
got a left-hander working down in the bullpen for Memphis. Although work may be too strong of a phrase, tossing. Well, timeout called, and Pico says, well, I'll just go ahead and throw that one back. We're working the gum today. And now two and two. See Pico working 92. Velocity is certainly there for him. Foul back. And that's ball four. So DeBose draws the walk, and it keeps the inning alive for Riley Davis. So Davis, the nine-hole hitter, singled back in the second inning, drove in a run. Davis, the guy, hit the ground ball through the left side. Pass Kohler, the third baseman, into left field. The state kicked it around a little bit and threw it away. And Memphis ended up taking the 3-2 lead on that play. Bulldogs tied it in the bottom of the third. Runner going, pitch is high, a throw is down, and he is out. Powell got a good pitch to throw on. Six runs, they were all earned in those two and two-thirds. And Connor Hyzak will lead off for State. Hyzak with a fly out to shallow center field his first time up. Gonna pull the string on that pitch. Durham went an inning in the ball game earlier this year against Ole Miss, allowed a hit. Walked a couple, but was not touched for a run. Breaking ball pulled over. Pass the third base coach, Chow, Kyle Cheesebro. Day here where Durham just trying to get back and get things back in line. His last two outings have been the toughest of the year. In fact, in the last four innings he has pitched, he's allowed 10 earned runs. A couple of doubles, three home runs in that stretch. One, two. Roll left side, third baseman over. Toss across and got him by a step. Well, nice play by Baskin, the third baseman. Yeah, Baskin got a lot on this throw. Has to right himself after going to his left. Hi, Zach, running hard down the line, but plenty of time. For Baskin on the throw. So leadoff man retired here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Aaron Downs will bat. Popped out in foul territory to the catcher his first time up. Bulldogs this weekend did a great job of answering. It seemed like every time LSU put a run up, 
The Bulldogs responded. Well, hit it in the ground, left side, third baseman up, toss it across, throw it high, and a, that'll be a throwing error on Baskin, the third baseman. Had to get it over there in a the hurry. Aaron Downs getting it down the line. Well, that's one thing that's really jumped out here in the past couple of games is the way that Aaron Downs gets down the line. He's not known as being an exceptionally fast runner, but he's running exceptionally hard. And now that he's healthy, he seems to have gotten a little more step to him. And here's Logan Kohler granted out to the shortstop his first time up. J.T. Durham has been at Memphis for a while. He pitched his freshman year at Northeast Mississippi Community College up in Boonville. Big swing. But has been at Memphis the last three years, 21, 22, 23, and so a teammate of Logan Kohler for a couple of those years. Almost 49 innings a year ago. ERA just over six. And the sweeping breaking ball, and the count's two and two. Boy, if you think back to some of the Bulldog struggles at the plate early in the season, Durham seems to Fit the mold, doesn't he? Soft, at the soft sweeping breaking pitch. Gave Bulldog lefties in particular so much trouble early in the year. And out into left field. And the catch is made for out number two. So got it out there, and Davis ranging over. It's on the 3-2 pitch. Downs was moving on the pitch. And now two outs, and here's Bryce Chance. Yeah, Downs was running on the pitch, but saw the ball in the air all the way and was able to hold up about halfway. Two-thirds of the way between first and second. Downs does not have a stolen base attempt this year. Oh, knocked down by the catcher. Good job by DeBose. And now two and one to Bryce Chance, who granted out to the shortstop his first time up. And trying to come down and end that time, and now three and one. Runner goes, and inside ball four. And now first and second with two outs. And the catcher, Joe Powell, will come to the plate. It's 
Powell's only appearance at the plate this ball game was in the second inning. He grounded out to the shortstop, which seemed to be the way the second inning went. All three outs that inning had the Bulldogs grounding out to the shortstop. He runs a fastball over the inside corner. And off the catcher. And the runners move up. So now a base hit not only could tie the game, but to the outfield could give you the lead. You know, the Bows just had that one squirt off to the right. Out to the shortstop. And up with it is Curtis. He'll toss it across, and that will end the inning. Well, Bulldogs get a couple on without a hit. And so Riley Davis will lead off. He was at the plate in the last inning when DeBose was thrown out trying to steal second. 9-1-2 and two due up for Memphis at the top of the fifth. And up the middle, that's a solid single. For the nine hole hitter, only the fifth hit of the year for Riley Davis. And the leadoff man aboard for Memphis. Here in the fifth inning. Well, Davis has to be feeling good. That's a pair of hits in the ball game for him. Hit one on the ground past Kohler at third, and now hits that one on the ground up the middle. And now Will Marcy will bat. 0 for 2 today, a strikeout in the first, a ground out to the shortstop in the second. And that ball in the left field for a base hit. Back-to-back -back singles for the Memphis Tigers to start the fifth inning. As Marcy with his first hit today. And now two aboard, and here comes the meat of the order. As Seth Cox will come to the plate. Well, one here where Marcy takes the inside pitch and just out of the reach of the shortstop, Rashawn. The fastball strike. Cox popped out to the shortstop in the first inning. He grounded out to the shortstop, Mershon, in the third. And hits that ball well into left field. Back goes down. He's got turned around, and that ball is gone. A three-run home run for Seth Cox. And Memphis has a 7-3 lead. Now this ball is hit well. It just carries and it carries and it carries out of the yard. And so back-to-back -back singles followed by a home run to Cox. That breaking ball hung up high in the zone. And now Austin Baskin will bat. Just a towering fly ball that gets out of the ballpark. Fifth home run on the season for Cox. Now an important hitter here for Clark. After allowing the three runs, the last thing he wants to do without an ounce, put another man on base. 
Nice. Drops a breaking ball in there and a count two and two. Yeah, nice breaky pitch there. Catches the zone. And ripped in the left field. And that's a base hit. Breaking ball hung the basket, and that's four consecutive hits in the inning off of K.K. Clark. And Dante Stewart will come to the plate. Uh, you see the Bulldog catcher, Joe Powell, is going to take a visit out to the mound. And Colby Holcomb beginning to loosen down to the Bulldog bullpen. Memphis had a 4-3 lead coming into this top of the fifth inning. Back-to-back -back singles, then a three-run home run by Seth Cox, and now another single by Baskin. Now we're going to have a visit out to the mound as Justin Parker will head out. And Holcomb hasn't been. Holcomb is kind of back in line. That ERA is, is high, but it has a lot to do with some of those early outings that he had. Well, Bulldogs have. Falling behind by four here in the fifth inning. Look at Holcomb. It was the game against Jackson State, and followed by Evansville, where Holcomb was just trying to find himself. But last time out, down on the coast, playing New Orleans, went four innings, didn't allow a hit, didn't allow a run, struck out seven, walked just two. And Holcomb, Bart, one of these guys that as Justin Parker came in, wanted to make some changes with, wanted to help him mechanically on a few things. And if you think about changing your swing in golf, sometimes changes can be a little painful. It takes some working through. It takes some trusting it, wanting to, having to fight that desire to go back to the old way of doing things. And Dante Stewart at the plate. Single to left field in the second inning. He lined out to the left fielder in a diving play by Aaron Downs to end the third. And you see all the pieces there with Holcomb. You see the 95 mile an hour fastball. He can run up there harder. And then you see the breaking pitch like that. Breaking ball down, the count's two and two. Ooh. Back swing got the head of Powell. Yeah, this one might take a minute. Boy, you can see Powell, that did not feel good at all. Follow through, not intentional at all. Of course, that's the, the thing about that. That's just a crazy thing about baseball sometimes. Stewart 
very unintentional with that. Just had that long back swing. 2-2. Two -two. So now back to action. Still nobody out. Two ball, two strike count, top of the fifth inning. Three runs home in the inning by Memphis. And watch Baskin at first. He's got a couple of stolen bases. Long just coming into the ball game. Might be tempted to put some pressure on him. Fouled off again. And up the middle, that's a solid single for Stewart. And that is five consecutive hits to start this inning. So, so long ago, the Holcomb came in the ball game. It seems almost odd from a timing perspective to say that Stewart was the first guy he faced. But, of course, he came in, then Powell took the bat to the head, had to come out of the game. And now Baskin runs at second, Stewart runs at first, and Seals comes to the plate, singled back in the fourth. Well, top hitter on the team, batting 354. Singled his last time up. First and second, nobody out. Bulldogs at first base had Hines in on the grass on the last pitch. Thinking about the bunt possibility. Turned him loose and fouled it back. Fastball at 95. And tap, going to be a tough play. Kohler on the run, throws it across, and in time, and let's see if they take a look at that. Well, a lot of heads, a lot of hands going to the side of the head as if to signal replay from the Memphis dugout. Coaches and players alike. Yeah, and they're going to take a look. Bang, bang, down at second base. Or down at first base. And... Memphis is challenged to play at first base. Let's see. He's out. He's out, and look if where the foot hits on the bag. That's this is the story here. If that ball, if if he hits the front of the bag, he's safe. But he kept the foot in the air and stepped on the middle to the back portion of the bag, and he's going to be out. You know, there will be a teaching moment here. And for all the. After further replay, the call in the field is confirmed. Out. Yeah, we'll take one last look here. Different Oop. angle. The ball hits the glove, foot hits the back of the bag. Break for the Bulldogs there. Nice play by Kohler. And so one out in the inning, and here's Jacob Compton. Doubled his first time up. He grounded out to the second baseman, Larry, back in the fourth.
And that ball into right field, a base hit, and that will drive home two more. On his way to second, Compton, here comes a throw, and he is in there safely with a two-run double, and Memphis has a 9-3 lead, a five-run top of the fifth inning. A big hit by Compton. The double drives home a pair, and the fifth has been disastrous for the Bulldogs. And Jake Curtis will bat for the Tigers. And he will do so with a man in scoring position, which has seemed to be the case about all inning. A single by Riley Davis started it. Will Marcy singled in the left field. A three-run home run by Seth Cox. There's a nice bunt. That's a hit. Couldn't have rolled it out there any better. And another hit in the inning for Memphis. Oh, my. Seventh hit of the inning, and it's a bunt single for Curtis. And this has all been done on hits. No walks, no hit batters. They have earned it. No errors. Five singles, a double, and a home run. Most of the time, you see a big inning, and you look for a walk. You look for a hit batter. You look for a few errors or misplays defensively. This has been all about hitting. Chopped up the middle. Mershon steps on the back, tosses across, and the double play will end the inning. Against J.T. Durham. Now for the Bulldog hitters here in this inning, I think the big key is to Understand you can't have a six-run swing of the bat. Can't try to get it all back in one plate appearance. Well, Bulldogs got two runs on three hits in the first inning. And then the solo home run in the third inning by Mershon. Got a couple on base in the bottom of the fourth without a hit. How about Memphis hitting 11 hits through five innings? And chopped to the third baseman, backing up on it, makes a nice play, tosses across, and it's in time for the out. Well, good play by the third baseman, Baskin, for out number one. That's a leadoff man to race to start. The bottom of the fifth inning, and here's Mershon, who'll turn around and bat from the right side for the first time today. Hit his first Bulldog home run of his career, the sophomore. Batting from the left side his last time up. He's two for two today. He had a single back in the first inning, and then the home run to right field, batting from the left side in the third. Well, Durham doing a good job keeping it down, working with some sink. Bulldogs have grounded out now for three of their four outs against him. And ripped into left field, the third hit of the day for Mershon. And he's on his way to second base. He'll stop right there with a double. So a single, a double, and a home run for David Mershon. Ball hit hard, gets down in the corner, and Mershon digging hard as always. And so Dakota Jordan will come to the plate. 
homered his first time up. He struck out looking in the third. Try to start him off with a breaking ball. Stayed away. JT Durham. That was the first hit off of Durham today. When you see the plan not to give Dakota Jordan a fastball across the plate. Goes breaking pitch again, leaves it outside. Going to be very, very interested to see if they try to engage Dakota right here. Even though it is a six run game. Well, it came after him and fouled it back. A little surprising there. Yeah, it was kind of that pitch he hit out of the yard to right center field his first time up. Got the pitch up and away. Got first base open, one out in the inning. Left-hander on deck, 2-1. Came down and in. All right, that's a nice job of letting the ball spin out of the zone by Dakota Jordan. Now it's 3-1. and one. No way you throw a fastball here. Nope. Stayed away. And now first and second. Second walk issued by JT Durham. And Hunter Hines will bat. Singled his first time up. Hit a ground ball into the shift his last time up. Hit it up the middle. It starts him off with a strike on the inside corner. Jordan's ability to work the walk and get himself on base changes what you can do with Hines, but you still have to think he's going to see a lot of spin in this at bat. Five run top of the fifth inning for Memphis to push a 4 3 lead out to 9 to 3. Five runs on seven hits. Wind blowing out the right. Stayed away. Foul pole to foul pole. Left field foul pole to right field foul pole. And hit it in the air. Shallow center field. Will it hang up? And it's going to drop for a base hit. They may get the middle runner. And save. And they may appeal this. Uh, huh. It ended up being the first base umpire, Kevin Sweeney, making the call. Matt Riser was like, I thought that was an out. Memphis is challenging to play at second base. See, Marcy sold it looking as. After further review, the call on the field will stand safe. Call will stand. No challenges left. 
You heard uh, Kevin Sweeney. It was not confirmed. It will stand, and that's saying you know we really didn't have conclusive evidence. So you're going to have a force play. Wow, closer than it appeared. And I think the thing that Matt Reiser was questioning more than anything is the rotation of umpires that ended up being the first base umpire, Kevin Sweeney, who really reacted slowly before making the call. And now that's going to be all as Memphis. Isaac with a fly out to center field in the first. He grounded out to the third baseman in the fourth. <laughs> Two and O to Isaac. And ball three. And now in danger of walking in a run. Aaron Downs on deck. He's 0 for 2. And ball four. And that will walk in a run and make it 9 to 4. Well, as a high Zach takes the pitch up. Bulldogs get a run, and now Aaron Downs, who had the big weekend, will come to the plate. Bulldogs could use a big hit from him. Hey, going back to that uh, review a minute ago, the thing about that, we talked about it, is Memphis lost that challenge, and now they have no challenges remaining. Nine four game, and here's Downs. And that breaking pitch is upstairs. Five balls in a row. And right there. Strike one. Garner walked a couple in his two innings of work last week against New Orleans was hit pretty hard as well. Stayed away and it stayed outside. Well, about two balls off the plate. Nice take by Aaron Downs. Works the count in his favor. And down the right field line and that ball will slice foul and out of play. Two two breaking ball and he fists it down the line it may stay in play but it's past the racing first baseman Compton and will stay two and two. We see Compton gives this one a run. Two two again. They fouled it off again. Nice job by Downs fighting off a pitch. It was just off the plate, but in protect mode with two strikes, couldn't take it. Base is loaded. The two two. Popped it foul again. Well, Downs grinding out the at bat. Memphis with a five run top of the fifth. Now we're in the bottom of the fifth. Bulldogs have a run home. The base is loaded and one out. 
Line down the right field line, slicing, and that is a foul ball. Yeah, try to wrap it around that pole down the right field line. And Aaron Downs fouling off a number of pitches. And the breaking ball stayed high and now three and two. That's a nice take by Downs. Ball just up. Sometimes when it's coming up there soft, it's tough to lay off that pitch, but nothing he could have done with it. Ripped into left field. That'll drive home a pair and make it a 9-6 game. Well, that changes things a little bit. What an at-bat by Aaron Downs. Just kept fouling off pitch after pitch, takes one just outside the zone, then gets one right over the middle and just hammers it 110 into left field. And now Logan Kohler will come to the plate. Still just one out in the inning. Well, that's the kind of thing that as a pitcher will just get in your head because you just cannot get one pass. But it'll be Garner who keeps the honors. And that is a foul ball by just an eyelash. Mm, just foul. Man chopped off the foot of Kohler, and that's a foul ball in the count of two. Three runs in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Dogs to get it back to nine to six. And the throw down to second, not in time. Try to get the backside runner, and everybody safe. Well, that's an interesting decision by DeBose right there. He didn't have a play on Isaac at third base, but he is spinning around as he makes this throw down to second. And that's one that could have easily gotten away. Well, a base hit here could really tighten things up. Got just a piece of it. Tried to run the change up away that time. And there's strike three call. Yes, it is. Stayed away, then came inside, and that's two outs in the inning. So Kohler strikes out looking, and that leaves it up to Bryce Chance. Well, you can see Kohler just kind of leaning into that one, expecting something on the outside part of the play. Got the inside fastball, couldn't do anything with it. And now Bryce Chance looking for the big hit. And now 2-0. Oh. 
All right, well, two and zero oh with first base open. You've got Joe Long on deck. Long just a two twenty hitter, so you wouldn't think that Garner would want to put a pitch over the middle of the plate here. Hey, and he misses does not. Inside. Three zero, and downstairs, and a runner going to score on a wild pitch. So not only the walk to chance, but the double whammy. As it caroms past the catcher, I mean that was just a fastball that he pulled through it. He got under Debose, and makes it a two-run game. And now back to the bullpen for. All right, DeBose throws out a lot of guys, but are you interested in running the backside guy here with Chance? That starts him off with a fastball on the outside corner. Chance five of six in stolen bases. There's strike two. First at bat for Johnny Long. Joe Powell drew the start and was hit on a backswing in the back of the head in the top half of this inning. High chop. And be the tough. beat to the bag and an infield single for Johnny Long and a run will score. And it makes it nine to eight. Well, that's about as soft of an RBI single as you can get. And Compton coming to make the play, couldn't decide, and nobody got over to second. Aaron Downs comes home to score, and now Amani Larry to the plate in the tying run down at second base. Amani 0 for 3, started this inning with a ground out to the third baseman. Hit a couple balls hard to the outfield and a couple flyouts to left. And now five runs home in the inning for State in the bottom of the fifth. And just below the knees in the count 2-0. Now, well, 10 runs total in the inning, and this thing looking more like a church league softball game. The Bulldogs would like one more hit in said game. Tie it up. And lifted in the air, slipping down the right fielder, and that ball may drop. It's going to drop. And we're tied at nine. Well, the oh right my. fielder, Seals, just lost his footing. He took the first step back. You've got the wind blowing out the right. So anything in the air, you take a step back. Step back, lost his footing. And then it falls in front. Well, when he slipped down, then you got to find it again. You're looking into the sun. Well, that changes things big time. Well, I got a brand new ball game now, tied at nine. He got the go ahead run over a third, still bottom of the fifth inning. This fifth inning has taken forever. 11 combined runs in just the fifth inning alone. Well, now you got a runner hung out, and <laughs> no throw through, though. Well, Amani Larry got caught midway between first and second. The catcher, DeBose, just looked at him. And I don't think wanted to risk having a rundown and giving the runner at third a chance to score. So now a pair in scoring position. Mershon doubled earlier this inning. Mm. 
just missed away in the count two and a. Pop fly single by Amani Larry, tying the game at nine. And now three and oh. Oh, and what the Bulldogs would give to get the guy on the on deck circle to the plate here in this inning. Dakota Jordan on deck. And inside ball four. And the bases are loaded for Dakota Jordan. Well, the thing that Dakota's got to guard against right here <laughs> is trying to hit one over the loss. Bases loaded, two outs. Tie ball game. And it hit him. And State has the lead. It's a seven run bottom of the fifth inning. Jordan will get credit with his third RBI of the day, his 35th of the season. And the bases remain loaded for Hunter Hines. Well, I am not sure to make of what we have seen for about the past hour. <laughs> it's what this inning feels like. So Bulldogs take the lead and a big opportunity here. That first pitch to Hunter Hines, he fouls it off the other way. And headed down to the mm. Paxton Burn, but man, that was scary. A change Ooh, up way nice out of front. That was a good pitch. And now 0 2. Following up the 90 mile an hour fastball with that pitch. And popped it up. And that will get just out of play down the third base side. Seven runs home in the inning. Five hits in the inning for State. And hit it a mile and high in the right field. Second baseman going out and make the play, and that will end the inning. So Stewart goes back and shitting started. Memphis scored five runs on seven hits in the top of the fifth inning. And State comes back with a seven spot in the bottom of the fifth inning, 12 combined runs in the fifth inning alone. Strike two. Chop left side and that will go foul. Nine, one and two in the inning. Riley Davis, then Will Marcy, Seth Cox. Cox homered his last time up. That was a big three-run home run in the fifth. Tigers got a big two-run double by Jacob Compton. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for Colby Holcomb. Well, you see the advantage that Holcomb has there when he works ahead in the account. 
One and two, you can afford to bring some high heat up out of the zone, gets the chase. When you get behind, you can't afford to do that. And then he pours the fastball in there at 94 to Will Marcy. Marcy singled his last time up. Let me guess what inning that was. That was the fifth. One for three today. He's got a strikeout and a ground out to short. And past the third baseman, Kohler. Boy, through the wickets. And that one down in the left field corner. Runner on his way to second, and that will be a true error on the Bulldog third baseman, who has not had many of them at all this year. And that will be his first. Stayed down on him. First error of the season for Logan Kohler comes against his old team. So now the tying run in scoring position with one down here. So Memphis tries to answer back. And Seth Cox fouls it back. And the 0-2. Oh, found it back again. Yes, yeah, so and not only an error, but it kind of caroms off. It goes down to the left field line and allowing Marcy to get to second base. And now wheeled around and may have him picked off. Throw back and the tag applied. And so Colby Holcomb wheeling around as Marcy was taking off, trying to get the big jump from second base. Let's take a look. And the Bulldogs handle the rundown. And now the count, two strikes to Cox. Well, that changes, that changes a lot, doesn't it? Changes a lot. Swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. So Colby Hope in the bottom of the sixth inning. Isaac Downs and then Kohler, five, six, and seven in the Bulldog order. Isaac drew a bases loaded walk back in the fifth inning. 0 for 2 officially today, a fly out to center field and a ground out to third. Had yeah, the big cut and the count one and one. Shift is on for Memphis on the infield. Right off the end of the bat, and that ball is going to stay foul. When you see Isaac running hard down the line, some people would ask. Hey, that ball's foul. Why are you still running hard? But the thing can always come back fair. And when it's spinning like that on the ground, particularly on that, that turf that was put in some 10 or so years ago. And, hey, we've seen that before on the third base side where a ball hit off the end of the bat and was about a foot foul, rolled down, and came back in fair because it had so much spin on it. One and two, the count. You can see that artificial turf. Got it around home plate. You know, with grass and dirt the way God intended, you don't see that as often. No, the great turf grass pro program here at State, too. Pitch way outside. Brandon Harden does such a nice job with his field. And I would think he would do a nice job with a few more feet. Foul territory as well. 
And hey, that's just my personal preference. Does not matter. I'm an old turf grass graduate. The pitch. Lifted in the air into right field, ranging back to the track, and that ball off the wall. Hyzak is going to try to get three. And he will be in there standing a stand-up triple for Connor Hyzak, his second triple of the season. Well, take a look at this. This ball hit to right field, and just off the bat, I didn't think it would carry as deep as it did. Nearly gets out of the yard. What wind? The wind earlier in this ball game, Bart, was pushing foul pole to foul pole from left to right. It's changed now, and it's pushing basically straight out to right field. But that ball off the bat at 98. And here's Aaron Downs. And that's a single in the center field, a base hit. An RBI single for Aaron Downs. He had a two-run single back in the fifth inning. That's his third RBI of the day, his second hit coming off the heels of a four-hit day on Sunday. 11-9 Bulldog lead. Boy, Aaron Downs continuing to see the baseball exceptionally well. And we're going to have a trek to the mound. So 0 for 3 today. Ground out, fly out, strike out. And fouls it off the left field side, not a play. Our toddler is gone. I can breathe a little easier. Man. You see a ball go down there. Man, that last one was. Oof. Got close to youngster down there a couple of innings ago. 1-1. One, one. And now two and two to Kohler. Jackson Lyons, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Memphis Tigers. Chopped, fielded by the first baseman, throw down to second. They got to apply the tag, not in time. So it takes the force off when the first baseman Compton touches the bag at first. You got to apply the tag down at second base. And Downs in there safely. So Kohler grounds out. And Bryce Chance will bat with a runner at second and two outs. A run home in the inning after the triple by Hyzak, an RBI single by Aaron Downs. Chance drew a, a walk his last time up and first pitch swinging, pops that ball into shallow right field. Second baseman back and Stewart will make the catch. And now two outs. And here's Johnny Long who had an infield single. Sometimes it, Charlie, in games, you need a little bit of luck. Johnny yeah. hit, <laughs> hit a ball off that turf and went high in the air down the first base line. He was able to beat out an infield single his last time up. Drove in a run. You'd have to think he spent his budget on luck here for the day. Bulldogs could use a two-out RBI. A lot of baseball left to play here. Way outside, count two and one. Yeah, now 
the count goes three and one. First base is open, but the top of the order is next. And that's ball four. And now first and second for Amani Larry. Well, you look back to that fifth inning, and Amani Larry had the pop fly single to right field that Seals slipped on. And it should have gotten Memphis out of the inning. That drove in the tying run. First pitch swing, he popped that ball up. Shortstop Curtis out on the grass, and he will make the catch, and that will end the inning. Yeah, and Ron Polk talks about hitting being contagious. There was an outbreak. Yep. Here's Stewart. And pops that ball up, first base side, and should get out of play. All right, Bart, a lot of at-bats still to be had in this ball game, but you have to start thinking about that series coming up this weekend and how your pitching lines up. Holcomb now, he's gone 37 pitches, no action in the bullpen. I think the Bulldogs would ride him as far as he can take them, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Definitely go as far as he, you allow him or he allows himself to go. What I mean by that is keeping guys off base. And Holcomb is a guy that has thrown some innings. I mean, he can go deep with some pitch counts. He has before. He certainly did a couple of times last year. And now two and two. Fourth pitcher of the night. Bradley Lofton started, went three innings, gave up three runs on three hits. And that's ball three in the count three and two. Pico Khan pitched the fourth inning, gave up a run on one hit. Single stolen base, a ground ball to the right side, and then a, he walked one. There's strike three called. Holcomb gets the strikeout, his third of the day. And that's the second out of the seventh. K.K. Clark came in to pitch the top of the fifth inning. He gave up four runs on four hits, faced four batters, gave up three singles and a home run. And a one hopper out to Mershon. And that is a quick one, two, three, top of the seventh. So it's stretch time here in the middle. of Mershon, Mershon the shortstop's got a well, not even a pretty good day, a really good day going to the plate. He's three for three. He was on base another time when he walked. And he's hit well from the right and the left side. He's homered from the left side. He's doubled from the right. Try to come inside and count one and one. Charlie, you mentioned... Colby Holcomb and what you do with Colby the rest of the way because you do have that short turnaround if you're staying. Swing and a miss and a count one and two. Bulldogs have a Thursday, Friday, Saturday SEC series this week on the road at Texas A&M. That pitch just missing inside corner to count two and two. Well, don't you have to think you're at the point now if you're going to take him out, now's the time to do it. Pitch yeah. count being where it is, you'd have him available for the weekend. Ground ball the right side, and it comes up hard. And regroup the throw, and not a time. Well, Memphis cannot challenge. They're out of challenges. Used the ball early on. Second baseman Stewart had that ball come up on him right there at the very end. Let's see if it hit the edge of the grass. No, it just hit off the dirt, came up high. And he save anyway. And 
And that will be the second error of the game for Memphis. And Dakota Jordan will bat. Well, Dakota, a two-run home run in the first inning, struck out looking in the third, walked and scored in the fifth, and later in the fifth inning was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded, then drove in a run. And pulls that one into left field for a base hit. Bershon will stop at second base. And back-to-back -back base runners here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Bulldogs looking to add to an 11-9 lead. And so now left on left as Hunter Hines will come to the plate. Hines a two for four night, couple of singles. I did, by the way, see Logan Forsythe with a ball in his hand down in the bullpen, but I hadn't seen him throw it yet. Pop back and out of play. Eleven runs on twelve hits for State. Nine runs, eleven hits for Memphis. One one. Oh, Try to come well. inside with that breaking ball, and, <laughs> and that thing looked like a softball coming up there to Hunter Hines too. That was a big cut. And now one and two. So after the breaking pitch, sides go fastball up. Breaking ball away right here, Charlie. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. If it does, it gets hit. That ball hit in the air into center field, backing up on its Marcy. Step away from the warning track. Runner is going to tag from second, our first and second, then move up to second and third. So good job by Dakota Jordan on the backside. Go back and tag at first base. Brashawn goes second to third. Dakota goes first to second. And you know, Bart, not all outs are created equal. That ball, a long fly ball, it, yes, it's an out. It doesn't get the run home. But what it does do is put a couple of runners in scoring position. And now with Isaac at the plate, Memphis is going to bring the infield in, already trailing 11-9. Don't want the Bulldogs to put another run on the board. And now for Isaac, who can hit the ball hard, the infield comes in and opens up a lot of angles for you. Tripled his last time up off the right field wall. Drew a bases loaded walk in the fifth inning. Dogs trying to add to an 11 9 lead. Here in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, good pitch. Yeah. 
tried to bust him in that time, and now the count's even. And now the count is full. Well, with first base open, I don't think you want to give in with a fastball here across the plate. That ball hit well in the center field and deep. Back to the wall and gone. A three-run home run for Connor Hyzak. And that'll unload the bases. Three-run shot. His second home run of the season. And he gave in with a fastball across the middle of the plate. And Connor Hyzak does to it what you're supposed to do with that pitch. Just drives it. Look at this. Right across the middle. Mm. They go back to the situation there, Bart. You've got a bag open. A walk isn't the worst thing. But that'll clean the bases. And now here's Aaron Downs. State once trailed in this game 9-3. Ball went 400 feet. I go back, Bart, and sometimes pitchers get so worried about issuing a walk that walk is not always the worst thing you can do. Third home run of the night. Ball got loose in the Memphis bullpen, came all the way back to behind the plate. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. And now two outs in the seventh inning. Just kept it down. And now Logan Kohler will come to the plate. An 0 for 4 night for Logan. Kohler and Chance, who stands on deck, the only guys in the lineup without a hit today for Mississippi State. So I suppose you could add Powell to that, but Powell had to come out of the ball game. Got the start at catcher today, but took a bat to the head on a backswing. Here you see Colby Holcomb moving around, throwing in the dugout like he'll be going back to the mound in the top of the eighth. Here's the 3-0. Outside, ball four. And so the inning stays alive for Bryce Chance. Yeah, Memphis had a five run top of the fifth, took a 9-3 lead. State got seven in the bottom of the fifth. One more in the sixth and now three more in the seventh. And that ball is a fair ball down into the left field corner. They're going to wave the runner around third. And coming around to score is Logan Kohler. And that makes it a 15-9 game, an RBI double for Bryce Chance. Just past the third baseman, Baskin. Oh. 
And now 15 to nine, and here's Johnny Long. Long had an infield single in the fifth inning. And then they walked in the sixth. And now one and two. Well, hit it off the chop. Catcher feels, throws, and in time. That was a tough play. Nice play by DeBose. Six, seven, and eight in the order against Colby Holcomb, who's now at three innings of work, one run, three hits, three strikeouts, no walks, 44 pitches. And now two and up. Forty-five pitches now, 30 strikes for Colby Holcomb. Ball three. Well, they sat over there a while in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Forsyth now is throwing in the pen. There's a strike. Big swing. Now they count three and two. And just off the outside corner, or caught the outside corner. And strike three is called. Well, you know, may have expanded a little bit right here. You know, you see right there, umpire set up on the inside part of the plate, and the Bulldog catcher long doing a nice job framing the pitch. And that is a tough job as an umpire when you have to when you're set up on one side trying to call a ball on the other. And it count evens. So Holcomb started out 3 0, then comes back to get the strikeout. Here's Curtis, who's one for three, singled in the fifth inning. Holcomb shaking off the sides. And into right field, here comes Dakota Jordan, there to make the catch for the second out of the inning. And two quick outs here in the eighth. It starts it off with a strike. Big swing and the count out too. Couple of sliders to get the at bat started. And then 92 stayed outside. Mm, nice pitch just off the plate.
And Cal goes full. And to the right fielder. Second baseman up with, excuse me, to the second baseman, Lamonte Larry up with it. And here's Amani Larry. Amani, a one for five night. Got a pop fly single in the fifth inning. Cut. Popped out to the shortstop his last time up. Go. Jonah played a couple of seasons down at East Mississippi. Community College and last year at Jackson State. And strike is called in the count one and two. And breaking ball grounded off the glove of the third baseman Baskin and into shallow left field. And it will be a leadoff single for Amani Larry and his second hit of the night. So the base hit from the guy who started his career at East Central Community College off the guy who pitched at East Mississippi. East Mississippi in Scuba, East Central indicator. And Mershon hits that one into center field and Marcy ranging back and he'll make the catch for out number one. We look over the past couple of seasons Junior college baseball in the state of Mississippi has been very, very good. Well, it really is. You got, and even right now in the South, especially, East Central ranked number one in the country, Pearl River ranked number five, Meridians ranked like 12. A lot of good coaches in the south and the north. Think about Dylan Suttoth down at Meridian has been good. Neil Holloman at East Central. Got Jack Edmondson has done a nice job turning that program around down at Southwest. Former Bulldog West Thickpin is the head coach at Jones College. Down in Ellisville. Two one. And drops it in there. And now the count's full to Dakota. Pitch is high, and that's ball four. Jones ranked 10th. That's Diggy. Well, Hines a chance to swing the bat. He pulls it foul and down into the bullpen. One and one to count. EC now 29 and 0. Oh. 
one one big swing and a count one and two. Are you going to say it? College with you in mind. College with you in mind. One, two. I ran that one inside. Well, pull the string on that one and hides way out in front. And now two outs in the inning. This is a really nice pitch. Posey gets the strikeout. I think we're going to have a pinch hitter here. So Isaac will come back. And Nolan Stevens will come in. Boy, and if there's ever a guy who's earned a chance to swing the bat or do whatever else he wants to do today. <laughs> Signal down to the bullpen, right out the lineup car. Dolan Stevens, man, this weekend was, he was a difference maker. Freshman of the week in the SEC. Freshman from Elk Grove, California. Five hits and 12 at bats on the season. But he was... Fantastic in relief on Friday. Has a home run to his credit. He hit that in a ball game a week ago down in Biloxi. Starts him off with a breaking ball. <laughs> well, look at that face. Yep, you got me. And that home run he hit in Biloxi to right field was in the into the teeth of the wind and out to right. And then down at the MGM ballpark, field faces southeast. And so if the wind is blowing off the gulf, it's straight in from right. And then Nolan hit it right into the teeth of the wind and got it out of ways. Out of the mid of the catcher. Solari will take third. Jordan stays put over at first base. Man, that will be a pass ball charged to DeBose. Runner takes off, and the ball is thrown into center field. Nobody covered the bag. Well, this throw goes all the way through. And the run scores from third base to make it 16 to nine. Well, you're taught as a catcher, just come up and throw. And it's up to the fielder to be at the bag. And the wires were across. And a count now three and two. And a runner at third base. You know, that's one of the things young catchers struggle with is so many times you just want to see the shortstop or the second baseman getting to the bag. You don't want to take that advice. It's the right thing to do to Bose. Throw it down there, just nobody to catch it. That ball ripped in the right field, and that's a base hit all the way to the wall. Run will score. Stevens has an RBI double. And that ball was scalded. And it's 17 to 9. 14 unanswered by State. And it's going to be a short cameo for Nolan Stevens. He's going to have the double. And then the Bulldogs are going to send a pinch runner out there. And so Dakota scores. And Aaron Downs will bat. Yeah, Downs is actually the winning run here. 
10 run rule is in effect. State won an eight on Sunday, 15 to five over LSU. O'Brien is the runner at second base who has pinch run for Stevens. And now 3-0 to Aaron Downs. Kohler in the on-deck circle. And that's ball four. And so now the winning run is on base. And Logan Kohler will bat. Kohler 0 for 4 on the day. Walked and scored in the seventh. We're going to have a walk to the mound, and we'll have a new pitcher. Well, nice play by DeBose right there. Big cut from Logan Kohler. Now they count two and one. Well, they say on a 2-0 count, you're in the right to take a big swing. And Kohler exercised that right. Strike two. Kohler walked and scored in the seventh. 0 for 4 nine tonight. Dogs have Jackson McKenzie in the on deck circle. I'd like for Kohler to save him in at bat here on the full count. And high and tight, and now the bases are loaded. And the winning run goes into scoring position. Ten run rule in effect, 17 9 game. And here is Jackson McKenzie. McKenzie one hit and six at bats. Limited bats for the freshman. Freshman from Pace, Florida. Kenzie regarded as a very good defensive first baseman, but swings a good stick, too. Pop that one up. On the infield. Uh, never know. Catcher calling for it, and DeBose makes the play. Now ready to go here in the top of the ninth inning. And Ryan Hunter with a pinch hit opportunity. Hunter with four at bats here this season. He's 0 for 4. And quickly 3 and 0 from Forsyth, who's in to try to finish this thing up. 
Got the final out of the eighth inning. Seventeen nine Bulldog Lee. Big swing. And the count three and two. And there is strike three. Ported right across the heart. Yeah, no, no buffer room there. Right where it needed to be. And so Hunter strikes out looking. And we'll have another pinch hitter, Alex Fernandez. And a count one and one. Fernandez, 13 hits and 56 at bats. And a count two and one. He's batting 232. Made 16 starts this year. The well, Bulldogs will be on the road Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They'll leave tomorrow. They normally try to practice the travel day the night before the first game. They can't practice tomorrow night out at A&M because A&M plays tomorrow night against Prairie View. 2-2. Swing and a miss. And back-to-back -back strikeouts for Logan Forsyth. A&M dropped two out of three this past weekend on the road down in Gainesville. Man, that's their only two losses of the season. Yeah, got a game on ESPNU on Thursday and then back to back on the plus. 630 on Thursday, six o'clock on Friday, and two o'clock for that Saturday game. Oh one. In the air, shallow right field. And Michael O'Brien will squeeze it and that will do it. And Mississippi State.